hi everyone welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be sharing the books that i plan on reading for 2024 i have a goal of reading two books per month so that's 24 books per year that's my cat in case you heard him oh so let's see if we can do it i would love and i think i could if i didn't have a full-time job but unfortunately i do <laughs> i mean fortunately and unfortunately um but it is what it is so <laughs> I mean I like my job it's just it's stressful sometimes but anyway getting off track here yeah so grab a cup of coffee I have mine right here and let's get into it I'm gonna start off with the books that I'm currently reading the first one is called A Little Life by Hanya I'm not even going to try and pronounce their last name I think I have a favorite character already and it's jude i wish he was like real anyway so this follows four college students um throughout their life and then you also get glimpses of uh their backstories and like their childhood like, i'm not too far into the book yet but it has already made me cry <laughs> And actually, when I was buying this book at my local bookstore, the guy ringing me up was like, good luck, because I heard this one's a real heartbreaker. So, <sighs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm really excited. So, I'm also reading this book. It's called Like Water for Chocolate, and it's by Lara Esquirel. I will say it has gotten me angry already because... If you've read the book, you know why. I feel like I can kind of relate in some areas to the main character and that frustration that comes with just being in Mexican culture, which can kind of be misogynistic at times. And it's a reality that women unfortunately have to live. I can see how this could cause anguish and anger, but I still think it's a nice story so far. And so the next book that I'm currently reading, this one's called A Gentle Reminder, but it's more like, they're not, are they poems? I'm not sure, but see, this is, this is kind of like an example. It's not a novel, is what I'm trying to say. So those are the books that I'm currently reading, and then these are the books that I want to read next. So the first one is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's by Robert... Kaiosaki. The reason I want to read this is because I'm at my first real job, you know, the first job in my career from what I studied in college. I have a reliable income for the first time in my life and I don't really know what to do with it. Like I know I have to pay my bills, but I'm not entirely sure what else to do with it. Like I don't want to be working for the rest of my life, so I definitely want to learn how to invest and I feel like this is a good start. So rich dad, poor dad. The next book I want to start reading is La Reina Roja and I ended up picking this up in Mexico when I had run out of books to read because I had read all the books that I took with me and I don't have a Kindle so I had to go to an actual bookstore. I'm pretty sure this is like an English book but was translated to Spanish. Hopefully this will make my Spanish skills better. The next book 2666 or 2666. 2666 i don't know whatever you however you want to interpret this and this is from i don't know <laughs> roberto bolaño roberto bolaño roberto bolaño <laughs> no idea how to say that um anyway so look at this cover and it goes oh it doesn't go to the back but you can see it at the side too it's just, oh my gosh, I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but I was definitely judging this book by its cover. It just looks so, oh my gosh. I don't even know, like, can you see that? Like, this is like a painting you would see in a church. I'm gonna read you this part. So it says, three academics on the trail of a reclusive German author a New York reporter on his first Mexican assignment, a widowed philosopher, a police detective, in love with an elusive older woman. These are among the searchers drawn to the border city of Santa Teresa, where over the course of a decade, hundreds of women have disappeared. So, 
it does seem like an interesting read and I'm really excited, although it is a thick boy, so. So the next book is Don Quixote. This one is from Miguel de Cervantes. I honestly picked this up because if you watch the show You, Joe Goldberg recommends this to somebody, so I thought I would pick it up. <laughs> the next book is also a recommendation from Joe Goldberg and it's called the Count of Monte Cristo. So this one also seems interesting to me because it's about revenge. The main character is falsely accused and then imprisoned. So he spends long hours imagining how to punish the people who falsely accused him in jail. When he's in jail, he's you know, kind of going through it. Um, should he ever escape? And if revenge is a dish best served cold, Edmund Dantes is learning to be a very patient and ruthless chef. This one is called Getting His Game Back by Gia de Carinet. Khalil Sarda went through a rough patch last year, but now he's nearly back to his old self. All he has to do is keep his stuff in the past. Real men don't have depression and go to therapy, or at least they don't admit it. He's ready to focus on his growing chain of barbershops, take care of his beloved Detroit community, and get back to being the ladies' man his family and friends tease him for being. It all looks easy until Vanessa throws him completely off his game. Vanessa Noble is too busy building a multi-million dollar tech career as a black woman before age 30 to be distracted by a relationship. Not to mention she's been burned before still dealing with the lingering hurt of a past breakup besides as her friends often remind her she'll never find a man who checks all the boxes on her famous list yet when she desperately needs a shape up and happens upon one of khalil's barbershops the fade he makes her reconsider everything khalil is charming intelligent and sexy and definitely seems like he treated a woman right but he's not black Vanessa may be willing to take a chance on Khalil, but a part of him is frustratingly closed off, just out of her reach. Will old patterns emerge to keep them apart, or have they both finally found a connection worth throwing away the playbook for? So, it just sounds so, like, good. I don't know. I'm so excited. <laughs> Summer Girl by l kennedy yeah this is more like of a beach read so college student casey hasn't spent an entire summer in avalon bay in years not since her parents divorced and her mother spitefully whisked her away to boston now that her grandmother is selling the boardwalk hotel that's been in their family for five decades Kate oh it's cassie sorry cassie returns to the quaint beach town to spend time with family ring in her 21st birthday and maybe find her summer fling. On her first night in town, she finds a perfect candidate, Tate, who's a fun-loving golden boy. Tate's sailing instructor and lovable player is no stranger to flings. In fact, he's always been down for a good time. But the moment he meets Cassie, he knows she's not the girl who you play games with. Cassie is gorgeous, hilarious, and frankly, the coolest person he's ever met. The last thing he wants to do is risk breaking her heart, and so he reluctantly puts her in the friend zone. Oh my god, guys. Not the friend zone. <laughs> Only to realize he's made a huge mistake. Soon his attraction to Cassie becomes impossible to ignore. As Cassie and Tate walk in the line between friends and lovers, they're about to discover that their situation is the least complicated part of this equation because Avalon Bay is full of secrets and their relationship might not survive when those secrets come to light. So it sounds scrumptious. Sounds so good. The next book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and this one's from Taylor Jenkins Reid. A reclusive Hollywood icon, Evelyn Hugo is finally ready to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life, but when she chooses unknown magazine reporter Monique Grant to write her story, no one is more astounded than Monique herself. Determined to use this opportunity to jumpstart her career, Monique listens in fascination. From making her way to Los Angeles in the 1950s to leaving show business in the 80s and of course to seven husbands along the way, Evelyn unspools a tale of ruthless ambition, unexpected friendship, and a great forbidden love. But as Evelyn's story nears its conclusion, it becomes clear that her life intersects with Monique's own in tragic and irreversible ways. Written with Reed's signature talent for creating complex, likable characters, this is a mesmerizing journey through the splendor of old Hollywood into the sober sobering realities of the present day as two women struggle with what it means and what it costs to face the truth. So, seven husbands, crazy. And the next book is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Nora Stephan's life is books. She's read them all and she's not that type of heroine. 
Not the plucky one, not the laid back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients, for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister, Libby. Which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for the month of August when Libby begs her for a sister's trip away with visions of a small town transformation for Nora, who she's convinced needs to become the heroine in her own story, but instead of picnics in meadows or run-ins with a handsome country doctor or bulging forearmed bartender, <laughs> Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a neat cute if not for the fact that they've already met many times and it's never been cute. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidence no editor worth their salt would allow, what they discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. So, it sounds cute, it sounds like cozy, so I'm excited for that. Okay, now the next set of books. This is called Tokyo Station. Let me read the back. A surreal moving story of a homeless ghost who haunts one of Tokyo's busiest train stations. It sounds really interesting. It's more spooky. The next book that I want to read is The Song of Achilles. This is from Madeline Miller. And I read her novel, Circe. And let me tell you, that is easily one of my favorite books ever. I don't know. I, I just love the story. I love that she had a strong female lead in the book. It was quite funny and all the adventures and everything she did. I just, I love her. I just love her. She's so, she's empathetic and she is strong at the same time and I love her power. I loved like just seeing her character development and she's quite a complex character as well. So I just, uh, I loved her book. So this one's called a song, The Song of Achilles. And the back says, Achilles, the best of all the Greeks, son of the cruel sea goddess Eris, and the legendary king Peleus, is strong, swift, and beautiful, irresistible to all who meet him. Patroclus is an awkward young prince, exiled from his homeland after an act of shocking violence. Brought together by chance, they forge an inseparable bond despite risking the god's wrath. They are trained by the centaur Sharon, Sharon in the arts of war and medicine, but when word comes that Helen of Sparta has been kidnapped, all the heroes of Greece are called upon to lay siege to Troy in her name. Seduced by the promise of glorious destiny, Achilles joins their cause and torn between love and fear for his friend Patroclus follows. Little do they know that the cruel fates will test them both as never before and demand a terrible sacrifice. So, I'm really excited for this. The next book is The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. Widower Mukesh Mukesh lives a quiet life in West London where he's where he shops every Wednesday, goes to the temple, and worries about his granddaughter Priya who hides in her room all day reading. Alicia is a bright but anxious teenager working at the local library when she discovers a forgotten slip of paper in the back of To Kill a Mockingbird. It contains a list of novels she's never heard of before. Intrigued, she decides to read every book on the list. As each story gives up its magic, the book the books transport Alicia away from the painful realities she's facing at home. When Mukesh arrives at the library desperate to forge a connection with his bookworm granddaughter, Alicia wonders if the books might be a lifeline for him too. As the reading list begins to circulate in their community, new readers discover how fiction can illuminate so much about joy and sorrow and real life. The next book is Ernest Gaines, A Lesson Before Dying, set in the small Cahoon community in the late 1940s. Jefferson, a young black man, is an unwitting party to a liquor store shootout in which three men are killed. The only survivor, he is convicted of murder and sentenced to death. Grant Wiggins, who left his hometown for the university, has returned to the plantation school to teach. As he struggles with his decision whether to stay or escape to another state, his aunt and Jefferson's godmother persuade him to visit Jefferson in his cell and impart his learning and his pride to Jefferson before his death. In the end, the two men forge a bond as they become, as they both come to understand the simple heroism of resisting and defying the expected. 
so the next book is bliss montage this is about love and loneliness connection and possession friendship motherhood the idea of home in bliss montage ling ma brings us eight wildly different tales that take on our everyday fears and fantasies a woman lives in a mansion with her husband and all her ex-boyfriends a toxic friendship comes to its breaking point with the resurgence of a drug that makes you invisible an ancient folk ritual might heal you of anything if you bury yourself alive and in office hours winner of an o henry prize a film professor discovers a portal inside a closet these and other scenarios investigate the ways that the out outlandish and the ordinary are shockingly deceptively heartbreakingly alike so the next book is called everything i know about love and it has parties dates friends jobs life scribbled out and this one's from dolly alderton and it's a memoir when it comes to the trials and triumphs of becoming an adult Alderton has seen and experienced it all. Everything I know about love is about bad dates, good friends, and above else, realizing that you are enough. Wildly funny, occasionally heartbreaking, it's about growing up, growing older, and learning to navigate friendships, jobs, loss, and romance along the way. Glittering with wit and insight, heart and humor, her memoir weaves together personal stories, satirical observations, and a series of lists, recipes, and other big nuts that will strike a chord of recognition with women of every age, which is early adulthood in all its terrifying and hopeful uncertainty. Got these two books for Christmas and it's about kind of like self-discovery in your 20s i feel like if you're in your early 20s you should definitely be reading these two books or at least that's what the person who gifted me these told me um so yeah <laughs> so i'm glad my mom died by jeanette mccurdy and i think most people know who jeanette mccurdy is she was sam puckett in the show iCarly so her memoir she's written about like her days in iCarly her relationship with her mom so I'm interested in just reading about her life and kind of see what she's written about because we don't really know the people behind the screen I mean not really and even in interviews and all that stuff like you don't get to know like what's happening in their behind the scenes life in their actual real life and so I think the title is also kind of a shocker. The next book is Woman Hollering Creek and Other Stories by Sandra Cisneros. It's a story collection of breathtaking range and authority whose characters give voice to the vibrant and varied life on both sides of the Mexican border. From a young girl revealing secrets only an 11 year old can know to a witch woman circling above the village on a pre-dawn flight, the women in these stories offer tales of pure discovery, filled with moments of infinite and intimate wisdom. So. This is called The Good Immigrant by edited by Nikesh Shukla and Shemin Suleiman. Apologies if I just butchered their names. So as America is consumed by tensions over immigration and the questions of which bodies are welcome, we find ourselves at a crossroads in grave danger of forgetting who we are as a nation. To remind us, this book hands the microphone to an astonishing array of writers who are also first and second generation immigrants and who share powerful personal stories of living between cultures and languages while struggling to figure out where they belong. It's something that I feel like I could really learn from, so yeah. The next book is called Invisible Child, Poverty, Survival, and Hope in an American City by Andrea Elliott and won the Pulitzer Prize, which is probably the highest like book award that you could get so follows eight dramatic years in the life of dasani a girl whose imagination is as soaring as the skyscrapers near her brooklyn shelter in the sweeping narrative elliot weaves the story of dasani's childhood with the history of her ancestors tracing their passage from slavery to the great migration north kiwi is cleaning himself here <laughs> that's fine <laughs> As the Sani comes of age, New York City's homeless crisis has exploded, deepening the chasm between rich and poor. She must guide her siblings through a world riddled by hunger, violence, racism, drug addiction, and the threat of foster care. Out on the street, the Sani becomes a fierce fighter to protect those who I love. When she finally escapes city life to enroll in a boarding school, she faces an impossible question. What if leaving poverty means abandoning your family and yourself? The Age of Surveillance Capitalism is the next book I want to read. 
and this one's from Shoshana Zuboff. It's more about like technology, how in this digital age we are, there's no real privacy anymore. So, The New Dream Crow by Michelle Alexander. I think her main argument, Alexander's main argument in this book is that our criminal justice system is a new slavery. It's, and I quote, we have not ended racial caste in America we have merely redesigned it. I think this makes sense because a lot of people are people of color and especially black people are incarcerated in higher rates than other types of people. So the next book I want to read is called White Fragility and this one is by Robin DiAngelo and this is basically about how why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism in this groundbreaking and timely book anti-racist educator robin d'angelo deftly illuminates the phenomenon of white fragility referring to the defensive moves that white people make when challenged racially white fragility is characterized by emotions such as anger fear and guilt and by behaviors including argumentation and silence these behaviors in turn function to reinstate white racial equilibrium and prevent any meaningful cross-racial dialogue. In this in-depth examination, D'Angelo explores how white fragility develops, how it protects racial inequality, and what we can do to engage more constructively. Okay, those are all the books I hope to read this year. Hopefully, you're inspired to read some. Let me know if you want to, of course, the books that you plan on reading this year. I'm linking my Goodreads accounts in the description box below if you want to be friends because i only have two friends so if you want to be friends please add me <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me hopefully this was fun for you it was definitely fun for me i kind of had forgotten some of the books and why i wanted to read them i just knew that they were on my shelf and like i wanted to at some point get to them but this just reminds me again and like makes me super excited to pick up the book and actually start reading anyway thank you guys so much and i'll see you in the next video bye